Hello and welcome. So, second movie today. Uh, yeah, the first movie didn't turn out as well. Uh, I don't know where I put this one. Yeah. We have it over here. It had a big nut in it, and yeah, you can go watch the movie. I'm gonna put it up in a way because it shows how how to cover a spoon, but we'll do it again. So we have a piece of cherry plum here again, and I'm just gonna sketch it out. So that's how you learn when you. So that's how it goes, but normally I don't run, I just shove away on it. Always remember to be careful about this line here. Uh, you go into it and then chop away this because if you don't, yeah, you're gonna take out the spoon ball as well. And that's very annoying when it happens. you're gonna end up with a teaspoon of firewood. See that's gonna split if I don't stop it here. It's gonna split all the way down here so Yeah, he tipped over the camera yesterday because he wanted to get the shavings I cut off. Uh, my dog. So this is going to be in my bottom part, and this is the top. Hopefully there's no nuts in this, it doesn't seem like it. So I guess this is not going to be an eating spoon, 
I actually want, wanted to make a eating spoon. But I guess this is gonna be a mid-sized cooking spoon instead. There's no reason to cut all of the wood off just to make a eating spoon. Busta, come here. Busta, come here. Silly. actually have a nut here as well, but I'll see where it goes. It's all the way in the end, so uh, if I want, I can cut it off here and make a eating spoon and stuff. You can put it on the edge and chop it like this. Uh, I find it as easy just to do it like this. Just be careful when it slips you don't chop your hand or anything like that. major point here so we got I think we're gonna go with a spoon like so you have a mid-size uh, cooking spoon or a really big eating spoon whatever you prefer to use it for okay. just like making spoons yeah I don't know maybe you should make it the a eating spoon. Oh, we'll see. We'll see when we get closer in. And I don't know if you can see it, but I have some. I made some lines with the chains over here uh, in my chopping block, so I can put it up against it. And this way as well. You know, when I chop like this, but I'm trying to keep it in the middle of the camera here. see there when I go like this I don't chop like this I just lift it a little bit and then go like this because then you don't take off too much So I think this is going to be an eating spoon instead, so we're going to chop a little more off the sides here. So if 
obviously I got a lot of way in I got deep in here so I gotta go here and take it in like this and be careful it doesn't flip over getting a curve like this uh, and I actually think oh, yeah, I will soon start moving with the knife instead take too much with the spoon than I with the knife because it's hard on your hands and wrists and stuff like that but at some point you gotta say okay now I gotta be careful because it's gonna take any more of there and there and it's gonna split and well you got some firewood again yeah, it doesn't look like much and with the chops here and well, this is a spoon plank, I guess. To your, into your body like this. Keep your wrist so you hit your stomach instead of like not going in like this, but going in so you hit your arm on your stomach. But as you can see on that jacket, I I hit myself as well, but not much, so it doesn't. Doing the damage either to the jacket, it doesn't matter. Try and touch you. Shaping the, the head so I can get an idea. Um, a lot of people, when they have it roughed out, um, oh well, they, they start by making the, the ball for the spoon. Um, I don't like that. I just leave a lot of wood in the thickness here so I can get back and make it as deep as I want. Uh, this is a fairly big eating spoon, so it's gonna be somewhat smaller, but I don't wanna take too much off because it has some good coloring and stuff like that.
So this has been an awkward knife here. I, I have carved five spoons, I guess, uh, five or six now. Um, and I haven't sharpened it yet. And I want to see how f how long time it takes to make it a dull, but make it so it's got to be a really good. See how sharp it is from the beginning and how long it keeps sharp. And so far, I have been no issues with this knife. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's going to be crooked this way. I want to make a eating spoon definitely because now I took too much sort of it. But I'm going to make an eating spoon with a long handle and a, a deep bowl so you can still get a lot of in it. And it's, still, it's a, it's a small spoon. Uh, sometimes I go like, oh god damn it, this is crooked as a mother. And then I finish it and it turns out to just for me. So let's see, this goes in there. Have it up here. I gotta, I gotta go over here, but I'll just make this a little bit flatter. See if that even it out. Well, it's a good spoon. It's a good spoon as well. Uh, depends on the people who want to buy it, you know. So now I want to cut the uh, bowl in it. And be careful with your hands over here. As you can see, I have a lot of small cuts here. Uh, but it's just, uh, it's nothing that's bleeding or anything, but you can use a glove as well, uh, put your glove or something like that. I prefer to do not have a glove on, I find it a bit harder to work with. And I always start in the middle, uh, making that as deep as I want it to be, and then going to the side so I can even it out, so you get a curve that is slightly curved and not a big bowl with the steep curves, because that's not nice to eat off. So I got a little cut in here and I said, oh I'm cut myself, I don't bleed there. So I cut myself and I'm starting to bleed. So and this band is doesn't do any good. I'm 
gonna make this fairly deep uh, because of the the small head here. So I'm trying to make it deep. I'm just smoothing out the edges so it's not that thick. Uh, I want to have an even way out here. And this is the Nick Westerman if you're wondering. It's a little bit hard to show you when I'm not used to sitting like this. So I need to go over here and take some more here. Looks like I'm getting there. I want to be a little deeper here. Normally, I don't make eating spoons this deep, um, but I want to keep it the long handle. Uh, maybe not this long, but I want to have a long handle on it, and uh, it would just look stupid if it was a really shallow. Uh, her ball that was on it. Let's just get rid of some of this excess wood here. You always want to keep the handle on how thick it is. So if you see here, you have the curve here. I wanted the curve to be here, uh, so it goes from here and then up. But yeah, I'll try to fix that when I get the shape of the head out here. So when I finish this, I always finish with sandpaper when it's on a spoon. Uh, and I do that because I don't want anything to get... When it's when you have wood food to do... And the smallest cracks, there's going to be food in it. And if you don't clean it properly, then uh, it's going to get stuck in there. And that's... That's not what you want in your wooden eating spoons. Uh, so I sand them um, with a grid up to 120, uh, and then I run it under hot water just to make the grain stand up again, and then I dry it, and then I sand it again. And I do that two or three times depending on what kind of wood and how rough it is just to get the smooth surface finish and you can do whatever you want and I actually like the ones that are with tool marks still but when you're trying to sell stuff people want smooth and something that look really really finish uh, so you gotta make that but 
always make what you want to use yourself and I like to use those really really finished soft spoons uh, when they have been sanded that's really a pleasure to use but I like tool marks uh, just not on my kitchen utensils uh, I want it to be easy to clean and safe to use and I don't think with tool marks on a spoon it's, gonna, it's not gonna work